Hey there guys, how's it going? So I'm back with another top 10 list. So this is a top 10 list that I've wanted to do for quite some time. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because, if I'm being honest guys, in regards to comic book movies, for me, in recent years, I've kind of gotten a bit sick and tired of comic book movies. And for those of you who have followed my movie review series and have been long time subscribers of me, you'll know that that's the case. Basically, my main issue with comic book movies nowadays, I'd say that for the past decade or so, or at least the past decade, comic book movies have forgotten how to be movies. Like, the, f the, the people in the comic book movie industry, all these production companies, these producers, these publishers, um, you know, these uh, filmmakers, writers, directors, um, you know, casts, all the people involved in the making of these comic book movies seem to have forgotten how to make a standalone movie. It's like every time they release a comic book movie nowadays, and let's forget the fact that there are multiple comic book movies per year, so the market is saturated as it is. Every time one gets released, it has to set up a wider universe, and instead of being a standalone movie that has a beginning, a middle, and an end, they feel like two hour long commercials, if you know what I mean. They feel like extended trailers where they're really there just trying to set up the sequel. And you can just tell right off the bat that the only thing these people have on their minds is the intention to create more, mod mo more movies, more products, and make more money. So the passion for the, for the project itself just doesn't tend to be there. And that's why I've kind of gone off comic book movies because when I was growing up, and when I grew up watching a lot of these movies, they were standalone movies. Again, they had a beginning, a middle, and an end. They crossed the I's, they dotted the T's. And if a movie was good enough, if it was successful enough, it would get a sequel. Now, if the movie wasn't so successful and, and didn't do that well at the box office, and, and didn't do that well critically, it might, it might not get a sequel. But they knew how to make it a standalone movie, so the movies didn't feel incomplete even if the movie never got a sequel you know you could you could see it on its own merit and you, you know you could enjoy it without feeling ripped off basically you know without feeling like, like it's unfinished like it's uncompleted you know the movies could stand alone on their own merit so that's my problem with modern day comic book movies and with that being said let's get into what are my personal opinion for the top 10 comic book movies of all time so this is my personal top 10 favorite comic book movies of all time let's get stuck in now just to point out this is exclusively going to be live action comic book movies i'm actually going to potentially do a separate list for my top 10 favorite animated comic book movies because i like a lot of animated comic book movies and that deserves a, a list of its own so yeah this is only going to be for live action comic book movies so coming in at number 10, we have Batman 1989, directed by Tim Burton, starring Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. Now, I didn't see this movie until many, many years after it came out. In fact, I think the first time I watched this movie was last year, and I reviewed it not long after. And, um, yeah, I, I never knew what I was missing out on, because this movie was a heck of a lot better than I expected it to be. It, of course, came out in a different era. I mean, again, back when superhero movies and comic book movies were their own thing you know they weren't trying to set up some wider universe you know they weren't sequel baiting they weren't doing all that back then you know this was back in a much better era for movies and this movie also came out in a time before you had an overabundance of cgi so the vast majority of what you see in this movie is practical and what i love so much about this movie is how much this movie reminds me of the, the whole aesthetics of the Batman comics. Now, any of you that have read Batman comics will know, particularly some of the older ones, you'll know that Gotham City is very dark, you know, very gothic, very decrepit, very um, unique looking. Like, it doesn't look like any um, real-life city. And that's this is the only, like, Batman movie that I can really think of that really got the look of Gotham right. It really, really does look like I imagined it to look in the comics. And there are so many practical set pieces, like the fight sequences in this movie look really good. Uh, Michael Keaton was really, really good as Batman. He's actually my favorite Batman to play a live action Batman, personally. Um, I, you know, I, I think that he did a great job acting wise. Now, the movie does have a few problems and that's why it's not higher up on the list. There isn't a whole lot of, um, character development for Batman also the movie did um, 
take a few liberties with the Joker's origins and whatnot. I mean, um, you know, Tim Burton does like to change shit in movies, and Tim Burton did make a ridiculous decision to make Joker pivotal to, um, you know, what happened to Batman and his parents and whatnot. But I, I didn't really like that personally. But nonetheless, it didn't take away from the overall experience. The overall experience was a positive one. This is a very, very good comic book movie. Solid movie, and... If you guys want to, you can check out my review. So yeah, number 10, Batman 1989. Coming in at number 9, we have Captain America The Winter Soldier, which of course was my number 1 in my top 10 MCU movies list. This, this made it to number 1 now. This movie could stand alone as its own perfect action movie. Like, even if this wasn't a comic book movie, even if it wasn't part of the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, just this movie itself would have stood alone to me. It's fantastic. Like I said, as an action movie, this is one of the best comic book movies I've ever seen to incorporate action. Um, the, the fight sequences in this movie are fast paced, they're brutal, they're really, really visually impressive. The movie has some excellent, fantastic special effects. Um, the, the Chris Evans, who played Captain America in the movie, really looked the part. I'd say that this movie in particular was the performance of his career, the best performance by far. You know, he's jacked in the movie, he really looks the part, um, you know, he does a great job in fight sequences, he does a great job acting-wise. He has a very um, uh, heartbreaking and emotional conflict during this movie, and I just felt this movie to be so um, emotionally strong. Like, the, the acting performances, the supporting cast in this movie, everything just made for a really, really fun experience. You know, you had Scarlett Johansson in this movie, and... This, by far, in my personal opinion, is the best Black Widow has ever been in a movie. Um, she she was very much um, she she was very much more useful in this movie than she was in like Iron Man two or even the Avengers movies. I felt that her presence in this movie was a lot more meaningful, and her acting performance was really good. They they delved into her backstory a little bit, and you find out a little bit more about why she is the way she is. Uh, Nick Fury is, is hilarious in this movie, played by Samuel L. Jackson. He does a great job, you know, comedic-wise. and He even has some pretty good action scenes, too. So, I just thought this was a solid action movie with a really good supporting cast. And I really, really enjoyed it. So, yeah, number nine, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Coming in at number eight, we have the movie Joker from Todd Phillips, which came out last year. Now, as you guys know, I saw this movie on its release day. I reviewed it, really enjoyed this movie. I loved it. And what I love most about this movie is it took me by surprise. I did not expect to like this movie. I really went into this movie with very low expectations. I didn't expect anything from it. And the movie was a masterpiece. I actually bought this movie on its on its release day in Blu-ray when it came out also. So I saw it in the theater on its release day. And uh, I bought it on Blu-ray the second I saw it in the shop. And yeah, me and my missus watched it again on Valentine's Day. We had a great time. And th this movie just, to me... It blew me out of the water in terms of what my expectations were. This isn't your traditional comic book film. This isn't even an action film. In fact, there's very little action in this movie. Now, what action is there is brutal, it's gory, it's R-rated, and it's realistic. And that's a, the best thing about this movie. It has a realistic tone. It has a, a realistic depiction, in my personal opinion, of mental illness of one man's descent into absolute madness, a man who lives in a community, in an environment which stirs up the pot, you know, really, really um, pokes and prods at him and makes his mental illness so much worse. And it also has a lot of things to say about, um, you know, how, how society deals with people who have mental illness. Like, you, you know, you find out in the movie he's on like seven different types of medication. And then when he stops taking his medication, he just absolutely, absolutely turns into an absolute madman. Like he just flips out and he just, he just goes crazy. And the, the the way that the movie slowly builds towards that finale, and you know this character that you feel sorry for in the beginning and you root for, and you see that he's down on his luck and he's just trying to take care of his mother and trying to look after himself and take care of his mental illness. You know, trying trying to manage it while he's while he's dealing with all this stuff and while he's being victimized, you know, you just feel so sorry for this character. But there's a lot of moral ambiguity to this film when the Joker starts to commit some horrible acts, like when he starts to do some really bad things and you start to get glimpses of 
that comic book Joker, you know, glimpses of what he goes on to become. And I thought that just as an origin story, I thought this movie was really well told. It has some really dark humour, which has always gone along with the Joker. Like, the character always has a lot of dark humour, even going back to the comic days and some of the previous movie adaptations and whatnot. And I just thought that this movie was a really, really fun masterpiece, man. I thought it was a really well-directed and well-acted movie. And it was one of the best movies of last year. This actually was on my top 10 list of, of, of movies of 2019. So, yeah, coming in at number 8, Joker. Really liked it. Coming in at number seven, we have a movie that some of you might say, well, this isn't really a comic book movie. No, I disagree. This is a comic book movie. I mean, for starters, the overall theme of this movie is based on comic books. The movie itself was inspired by comic books. Um, comic books are referenced and mentioned throughout. Uh, there are many comic books that make appearances in the movie. And just the overall story of this movie and overall inspiration of this movie is comic book based. You know, the characters are based on depictions of certain comic book adaptations and stuff like that. And the movie just, it is a comic book movie, guys. It is, okay? Comic books, more than any other movie on this list, comic books are prominent in this movie. So yes, this is a comic book movie and it's fantastic, okay? I, again, I reviewed this one on my channel, uh, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Of course, the movie, 19 years later or so, ended up getting two unexpected sequels that nobody expected, and that was a big surprise. And this is from back in the day when M. Night Shyamalan was a master at directing movies. M. Night Shyamalan was so good at developing characters in such a short space of time. Like, he could make a movie that was an hour and 40 minutes long, so just a standard length of movie, but he would sucker you into the story so much to the point where you really, really identify with these characters and you really feel for these characters. And the movie, just like Joker, it's slow paced and doesn't have a, uh, a whole lot of action. There's only like one action scene in this whole movie, like one action scene towards the end and that's it. So the movie has to stand on its own as a character driven movie and it does. Bruce Willis is fantastic in the movie. The boy that plays his son was a really, really fantastic child actor. And M. Night Shyamalan's um, direction and cinematography and films like uh, uh, and things like that, as well as the amazing soundtrack for this movie by James Newton Howard, made for a surprisingly inspired and ju just really uplifting movie. Like, towards the end of this movie, I was pumped. It's one of them movies that it's so slow and, 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 and builds up throughout um, so much character development, and you go along this journey with this character to the point where to the end of the movie when he finally becomes that hero that he's destined to be when he finally breaks the mold and becomes that hero you're just cheering like like you, you're just you're so euphoric at the end of this movie like M. Night Shyamalan was so good at that he was so good at blending soundtrack and cinematography character development and just and, and, and you know a slow burn you know a slow build to a movie to make a really, really uplifting and inspiring story. And I think this movie's fantastic. Um, again, there's plenty of comic book references, there's comic book themes, um, and it sort of looks at comic books from a more um, historic and realistic perspective. Like, maybe there's something more to this. Maybe this entire culture of comic books is based on something someone saw, like based on reality. And maybe superheroes are really among us, but just not as you know, not as um, over-dramatized as they are in fiction, you know, as they are in movies and comic books, and I just think that this movie is well-directed, well-acted, and I just think, on, it, on its own merit, it stands alone as a fantastic movie, and I, I felt compelled to put it on this list. So yeah, number seven, Unbreakable. So coming in at number six, we have a childhood favorite of mine, and that is Superman 2, starring Christopher Reeve. Now, some people might say that the first movie is better. Personally, although I liked the first movie, and I always enjoyed it as a kid, I always preferred the second movie, Superman 2. I just think that this movie, to me, was more entertaining. You know, there was plenty more action. There was more of a um, realistic threat for Superman, and there's more of a feeling of, you know, despair and, and, and danger in this movie. Because in this movie, Superman genuinely gets rendered powerless. Like, there's a whole act of this movie where he, in order to try and um, exempt himself of all responsibility, he decides, you know what, I'm done with this. 
you know, he gives up his power. He's like, I don't want to do this anymore. Don't want to be a hero. I don't want to be that guy who everyone looks to for protection. So he gives up his power. He tries to live a normal life. Tries to um, just move away and, 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 and start a family and whatnot. But obviously as a result of that, people are in danger. The world is in danger. They need him. And he no longer has that power to save people. You know, he no longer has that power to keep the world safe. But he realizes that the world needs him. He realizes that it's his destiny and his responsibility to be that hero that people look up to. And I think this is a really inspiring movie. It's a really fun movie. The acting and casting choices for this movie are fantastic. Um, the movie is instantly quotable. Like, you will kneel before Zod. Yeah, that, that came from this movie. And... You know, the, the villains in this movie are just as powerful as Superman. And Superman has to use his brain and his wit to win in this movie. That's what I like about it. See, the first movie, he was overpowered. Okay, nobody could match him. In this movie, he has to be smart and tactful and show what he's made of. And that's what I've always enjoyed about this movie. It's a more um, of an underdog story than the first movie was. And it's a more... Um, it's a more intellectual movie. I think it's more well written than the first movie was. And I just, I really enjoyed this one. It's a really good movie. It's a great special effects for the time. I mean, for the time this movie came out, which was what, late 70s? Um, it, it look, it's funny, the, the effects in this movie from the late bloody 70s look a lot better than a lot of movies you see nowadays with an overabundance of CGI and whatnot. I mean, you compare this movie to a movie like Black Panther, which came out in 2018, this movie looks better. I'm not even kidding, the special effects of this movie look better than that movie. This movie looks so good for its time, so yeah, coming in at number 6, a childhood favourite of mine, one of my favourite superhero films as a kid, Superman 2. So coming in at number 5 we have The Dark Knight, which is the second in Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. Um, I reviewed this movie, I reviewed the entire trilogy in fact, and this movie's an absolute blast, yeah, it really is, man. Um, even though it's a long movie, it's over two and a half hours long, it doesn't feel that long. It feels very fast-paced. Um, the acting performances from Christian Bale, from from um, Michael Caine and whatnot, and also from Heath Ledger, who played the menacing villain in the movie, he plays the Joker. Now, this is very different to Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, who was an origin story. This is a peak Joker. This is Joker when he's the clown prince of crime, when he's an agent of chaos as he calls himself and he's just so intimidating in this movie and he's so charismatic and funny but with his dark humor and he just absolutely takes the whole city hostage and Batman is, is really really stretched thin in this movie and really has to use all his resources and intelligence to figure out this villain you know it's a very very intellectual movie man there's a lot of mind games a lot of real um, uh, you know, exploitative type dialogue, like Joker sort of exploits Batman's um, morality and stuff like that, and then he, he uses the people that Batman loves and cares about against him, and you know, he sort of psychologically mind fucks Batman in this movie, he psychologically messes him around and toys with him and, you know, manipulates the whole city into doing what he says just to prove that everyone is as insane as him and prove that everybody can be driven to madness just like he became a madman and you know he, he believes that everybody's a madman deep down and that everybody's crazy and sick and that he can expose that that's kind of the theme of this movie and and batman basically has to prove that no there is some order in the world and there is good in people and not everybody's as sick as you not everybody's as crazy as you and there's a lot of twists and turns along the way with this movie some very good action sequences some very good cinematography a very good soundtrack and to me the acting as well as the action sequences made this such a, um, a blast to watch, man. I really do like this one and I would recommend it. And, you know, th this movie's been praised to no end, man. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty much well known for being one of the best comic book movies of all time. And although it might be a little bit overrated, there's, I, I did say in my review, I think that, that, that there's a couple of things about this movie that I personally would have changed or cut out. But that's not to say that it doesn't deserve its place on this list. It does. I really do have a lot of fun watching it man, I had a blast watching this movie when I first watched it and I can watch it over and over again and I always enjoy it, so coming in at number 5, The Dark Knight. Coming in at number 4 we have a surprising one, we have the movie Kick-Ass, now this movie yes it's based on a comic book, it's based on graphic novels and whatnot. Um, and this movie is 
hilarious. Like, what else can I say? It's a, it's a comedy, it's R-rated, first of all, and it's funny, when Deadpool came out, you know, a lot of people made a big fuss about that movie being R-rated and being a comedy and whatnot. Listen, I, I prefer Kick-Ass, and I'm not saying that Deadpool isn't a bad movie, I did enjoy the first Deadpool. Fuck the second movie, that movie sucked. And, and, and fuck the second Kick-Ass as well, dude. Kick-Ass 2, the sequel, was an abomination. That movie was just dreadful, it was awful. But the first entry in, in the Kick-Ass series, I think, was really, really good. Really underrated, too. Um, it's a very bloody and violent movie. Like, this movie's surprisingly violent. Like, proper gory and proper brutal for a, for a comic film. And again, it's got some real um, funny humour, some dialogue. It's got a character that you, that you root for, but at the same time, you kind of laugh at him in jest because he's a, he's a real pathetic and you know, weaselly type character, but at the same time, he's also a hero, and he's he's also, he means well, and <laughs> you sort of get the idea watching this, that, and, and it's funny, I watched a documentary about the making of this movie, because I bought the movie on Blu-ray, and, and on the um, special features, the guy who, who wrote the original novel, who's a, a guy from Scotland, actually, and he was talking about how <laughs> it was inspired by basically when he was a kid him and his friend used to want to become superheroes so they literally like they joined a karate club and you know they they, they they did all sorts of training and you know dressed up in masks and they went out a couple of nights and actually what wanted to be superheroes they actually did what the character in this movie does but of course you got their asses kicked and <laughs> never did it again and he also talked about the, the reason why the movie had so much graphic realism and, and why that was in the novel the comics is because you know he got punched in the face one time and, and he ended up with a big like swollen up jaw and you know when he he, he talked about when he watches comic book films and he, he reads comic books and he sees people get smacked in the face and get beaten up and, and they don't seem to have any visible damage and he wanted to show the, the graphic realism of what it would be like to be in this real life situation and this movie, it, it's surprisingly dark, like towards the end, there's like a couple of torture scenes, you know, people get hacked up, people get shot, um, you know, people people explode, you know, people get blown up, there's, there, people get beaten to death, like, there's a lot of real gory shit in this movie, but it's done in a way that, it, 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 it's hard to explain, but there's a tone to this movie where it's funny, but it's also inspiring, like the things that happen in this movie and and, and the, the tone of it and the pacing of it just makes for an absolute blast and I'll never forget uh, going to see this movie with some of my cousins man and we were just so hyped after seeing this movie man and it kind of made me want to dress up in a mask and go and fight some criminals man like it actually made me want to do that so I, I totally get it I get what they were going for in this movie I get the vibe and I think that as far as comic movies go it's, it's one of the most underrated out there I really do really really great movie coming in at number four kick ass so coming in at number three we have batman begins which is the first in the nolan batman trilogy and again i reviewed this movie if you want to check out my review i'll leave a link in the description section to my movie review series you guys can check out any of my movie reviews that you want to and yeah this movie is a blast a really really good movie man again it's very slow paced but it's it's a slow burner it builds up to a amazing finale now this is an origin story for Batman, and it's probably the, the best origin story for Batman they could have come up with in a live-action movie, and this is my personal favourite uh, live-action Batman movie. It's not my favourite Batman movie, believe me, we'll get to that when I do my top 10 um, animated uh, comic book movies list, but live-action um, Batman flick, this is a really good movie. Um, again, it stars Christian Bale, Michael Caine and whatnot. Liam Neeson is in this movie, he plays uh, sort of a mentor to Batman, however, again, any of you that have seen the movie know how that ends up, and Liam Neeson is badass in this movie, like, this is one of his best performances of his career, in my opinion, and, you know, I, I just think that this movie, the way it's built up, um, you know, the way it's acted, the way it's written, and the way it concludes, it, it, it would have it worked as a standalone, and yeah, the way this movie is built up, the way it's acted, the way that it's, um, just the way that it's paced, it's a real slow burn, and just, I, I like this movie so much, man, I just think that for, as an origin story, uh, the character development, even like the character flaws that are in the beginning of this movie, that get sort of ironed out towards the end, and, you know, the, 
The movie has multiple villains, however, the villains are not overbearing. They're actually a lot more um, realistic in this movie than, than they would be in other adaptations. In fact, the villains very much feel human. Like, there's no supernatural stuff in this movie. It's very psychological. It's very grounded. You know, there's a lot of crime drama. You know, uh, there's actors in this movie like Cillian Murphy, Tom Wilkinson, you know, play some of the villains along with, like, Liam Neeson and Michael Caine's in the movie, of course. Very, very good movie with a lot of talent. And, and I just think that this is... I've got to say, out of all of Christopher Nolan's movies, this is without a doubt my favourite. And like I said, it's my favourite live action Batman movie. It has some good action scenes, however. The action scenes that are in this movie are more geared towards the element of fear and surprise and stealth and, you know, just being able to overwhelm your enemies and stuff like that. There's a lot of, like, ninja tactics in this movie. It's not like a traditional action film with, like, wide shots and stuff like that. The, the sequel was more like that. But this movie is, is a lot more, um, you know, Batman striking from the shadows. And you sort of see him attack these guys, but from the perspective of the criminals, it puts you in their shoes. And I just think that the, the cinematography and, the, and the, the way that the action scenes incorporated things like fear were fantastic in this movie. I like the design of Gotham in this movie. It's not quite as um, unique or memorable as in Batman 1989. And again, I prefer the acting of, of Michael Keaton as Batman to Christian Bale. I think Michael Keaton, you know, his voice and his look was a little bit cooler, but I, I just think this movie overall, I think this was a better directed movie and it had better writing and stuff like that. And, um, I just think it's a great movie, man. I really do enjoy this one. So yeah, coming in at number three, we have Batman Begins. So coming in at number two, we have Spider-Man 2. Now, um, this is, of course, the sequel to Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man movie, and, again, I reviewed this one, too. Um, in fact, I have a separate playlist of all my Spider-Man reviews. I reviewed most of the Spider-Man movies, and, again, you can check that out if you want to. Um, this movie is a masterpiece. What else can I say about Spider-Man 2 that hasn't already been said? This is one of the most visually impressive comic book films I think I've ever seen, I think I ever will see. This movie came out in 2004, so well over a decade. I mean, this is a long time ago this movie came out. Um, and, and man, like like the special effects of this movie, you know, just like I said about Superman that came out in the 70s, man, the special effects of this movie for its time were groundbreaking. And this movie looks better than any comic book movie from the past decade in terms of its special effects, its CGI, its stunt work and action scenes, its, its cinematography. Uh, just the way it looks and the whole atmosphere, the, the way this movie is directed, it's so much better, in my personal opinion, than anything that's come out in the past decade. And it's just an absolute blast. The comedy in this movie, where, where do I even begin with the comedy? This movie is hilarious. Like, I don't even know where to start. It's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. And it's not even, it, it, it's not even technically a comedy. It just... It's a comic book film and an action film with romance and drama and all that other stuff, all that combat and all that visually impressive stuff. But it's so funny. It's one of the funniest films I've ever seen. It's well acted. I think Tobey Maguire was fantastic as Spider-Man, man. man. Like, 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 he really nailed the role. He was the perfect casting choice, in my opinion. I prefer him to any of the other actors who played Spider-Man. I, I think he just suited the role perfectly. Yeah, people complained that he was too old. I don't care, and, and plus he wasn't that old, he was like 26, okay, and he played a character who was, what, 17, 18, 19, you know, he, he wasn't that much older than the character he was playing, so cut that shit out, man, <laughs> you know, th this is just, uh, I, I almost don't even know what else I want to say, because I did a review for this movie that was like 20 minutes long, and I covered it all in that review, so, if you guys want to know what I think about this movie, just check out my review, I love it, one of my favourite comic book films of all time. However, surprisingly, not my absolute favourite. So yeah, coming in at number two, Spider-Man 2. So perhaps unsurprisingly, now anybody who saw my review for this movie, for number one, will know why it's number one, and probably knew before seeing this list that it was going to be number one, and that is Spider-Man from 2002. So the last movie that I talked about just there, Spider-Man 2, was the sequel to this, and you heard how much I love that movie. Well, I like this one even more. This movie is a perfect movie, in my opinion. It is the perfect comic book film. Where do I even begin? Where do I even begin? Again, I, I, I reviewed this movie already. I, 
I went well into detail. I, you know, I, I spent over 20 minutes talking about it, and I have zero criticisms for this movie whatsoever. The one reason why I didn't put the second movie over this one is because the second movie, as great as that movie is, there was one little nitpick I had for it, and it's just with a couple of scenes towards the end of the movie where a, a couple of things happen which I didn't quite agree with and didn't quite like. Again, you can check out my review for that, but it was just a little nitpick, you know, to me personally. It was nothing serious, but this movie right here, Spider-Man from 2002, I have zero issues with this movie. This is the perfect movie. This movie is an absolute 10 out of 10 masterpiece, without a doubt. It's paced perfectly. This movie's short, okay, it's a short movie, yet somehow within a short movie they were able to cram just so much character development. They were able to make you care and sympathize with this character so much, you know, they take you on a, a thrilling journey. They have action sequences which are mind-blowing and surprisingly gritty. Um, it has special effects that for 2002 look amazing. It has practical effects. It has some really, really cool CG, although not too much CG. You know, it has, um, you know, practical and, and, and physical suits and costumes that the characters wear that look so real. Um, it has animatronics. It has a, a, a huge amount of comedy. You know, characters introduced like J. Jonah Jameson, who became iconic. You know, a character who you're supposed to hate, but you end up really liking because he's so funny and charismatic. Uh, again, Tobey Maguire, the perfect casting choice to play Spider-Man. A really, really sweet love interest, you know, with him and Mary Jane that, um, you know, and, and it's surprising the way that that love story ends towards the end of the movie, and, and it's really, you know, the, the, it's really surprising just how this movie ends. You don't expect it. You know, it's a movie that leaves you wanting more, but it's satisfying. Like I said, you know, this came out in an era where movies... Even comic book movies had a beginning, a middle, and an end. They weren't trying to be a big universe. They, won't tr they weren't trying to set up a whole load of sequels and spin-offs and prequels and pre-sequels and all that other stuff. They didn't need all that. You know, they didn't need spin-off movies. This was its own thing, its own vision. And Sam Raimi made a masterpiece. This is the best comic book movie of all time, in my opinion. Again, I almost don't even want to spend much more time talking about it because I already did a very long review. Well, 20 minutes isn't very long, but it's it's long enough. You know, I, I already did a, a 20 minute review covering why I love this movie so much. And if you guys want to know, just I implore you guys to check that out. So yeah, coming in at number one, we have Spider-Man from 2002, directed by Sam Raimi, starring Tobey Maguire. And I haven't even mentioned yet that the villain of this movie, played by William Dafoe, one of my favourites, if not my favourite, uh, comic book villain of all time. Fantastic performance, fantastic acting, and just a, a blast of a movie. A great movie with great action, great comedy, really enjoyable, really likeable characters, and, and just a movie that I love. Um, yeah, coming in at number one, we have Spider-Man 2002. And that concludes my top ten comic book movies of all time list. Stay tuned for my um, top 10 animated comic book movies. I don't know when that's going to be coming out, but it'll be coming out at some point. And stay tuned for more top 10 lists, more reviews, uh, more boxing content, you know, more sports talk, more political stuff. We're going to be getting real busy on this channel in the upcoming months. So let me know what you guys think anyway. Thanks for watching and God bless. And if you guys feel compelled to subscribe, you can go ahead and do so if you want. It's totally up to yourselves. Thanks for watching. God bless.